Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat at its regular time. Um, this is episode number 613. And the topic today is, are you standing on solid ground? And I'm going to put some things on the table that might inspire you, that might challenge you, that might help you too. So before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is what inspired these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And so right now, the episode count is up to number 613. So I've got a few of these under my belt. And the topic today is, are you standing on solid ground? And I don't think, well, I say this, you may not get what I'm talking about right up front. So let me explain what I mean, basically. Um, the framing I want to talk about, this is simply about in the area of relationship and dating and meeting and becoming more able to relate to somebody in a romantic setting, is, is, is important that you stand on solid ground, meaning that you stand on your own two feet. And I mean this from an energetic point of view and an emotional point of view. So let me give you some examples of what it's not like. Excuse me. Some examples of what it's like not to be on solid ground. That might be easy to illustrate. So if you are sitting, waiting for someone to show up in your life and save you and make you feel whole so you can have a great relationship, that is not solid ground. Hey, Kai, good to see you, my bro, because I haven't seen you for a while. Um, thanks for being here. Um, another option of not being on solid ground. Let me see a few of these in my back of my mind, so let me see if they come forward for you so you can get some resonance and perhaps even feel into what these are about for you. So again, so one of them, the first one is if you're sitting there waiting for someone to show up and save you, make you feel whole. That actually leads into the second one, which is if you don't feel you're actually complete until you meet somebody else, you're not on solid ground. It's like standing on foot. In fact, the analogy I'm seeing in my mind as I say this is if you are someone who is, I'll do it that way around. This way around. Okay, this way around. The analogy I keep imagining is if two people are standing both on one foot and they're basically holding hands, they don't fall over. That's, that's in one way, is a very powerful illustration of the codependency of bad relationship. And yeah, I'm going to do that too. All right. So if you are in a relationship where it's that 50-50 that experience, which is what it is, like you're standing one foot and so is the other person leaning on each other, if one of you moves the wrong way, there's a collapse, you don't end up staying together, or you end up some dysfunction or some pain. Codependency, as the best way of describing, is a 50-50 relationship, as in one foot, one foot leaning together, not one foot in, one foot out, but one foot standing on, one foot standing on, leaning in. A truly authentic relationship is 100-100, as I talk about in my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which I'll put a link into the comments. I keep promoting stuff, it comes through, I've got to put it in the comments so you can find the things I'm talking about. So my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, has 50 principles, of which one of them talks about relationship not being 50-50, but being 100-100. So, what's I can do with solid ground? You may understand that if you're standing one foot, after a while you're gonna get tired and you won't be standing in balance. Well, solid ground is you're planted both feet on the ground, solidly standing there. This is a way of supporting yourself energetically. There is a piece, um, I can say this, there's a piece where there's a temptation to think that you have to get all your ducks in a row to be on solid ground, and that's part of it too if you want it to be. So getting your career the right way around, taking care of your health could be the right thing, getting financial bank accounts in the right order and everything else. For some people, that's their structure. That's the solid ground they want to build. And that's all well and good. Not required, but it's all well and good. But if you don't do the emotional solid ground work, that's where things fall apart. So if you get into a relationship with somebody where you, where, where you are in a place where you have not resolved or healed your past wounds from past relationships, then that's not solid ground either. Doesn't matter how together your life is and how together their life is. If you come into that relationship wounded and half-heartedly because half your heart's tied up to your past relationships, think about that one for a second, and you're caught up in the pattern where you don't deal with the past, you just put it away, or you bury it, or you stuff it, or you ignore it, or just put your fingers in your ears and just go, la, 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 I'm not listening to that, which some people do. Then you're not standing on solid ground for your partner because you're split between your new partnership and your old one that isn't complete, and that isn't healthy. 
So I'm very adamant about this point, is that you need to be standing on that solid ground, that firm foundation that relies upon yourself so you can be in a healthy relationship with somebody else. Because without the first one, you won't get the second one in a healthy way. Again, codependence is a way of being in a relationship that I don't believe works. Some people thrive on it and in a very dysfunctional way because codependence puts you in a place of being a victim. And yes, I'll be speaking about this for a moment too. I haven't talked about it for a while. I was talking about it yesterday with a friend of mine as well. The culture we have been raised in is very, um, what I'm looking for, It's not proactive. No, it's not. It's not proactive at all. <laughs> it's very much about um, the more dependent upon you are on somebody else, the better. That's the way the country's been run, in fact, for so many ways, which is an unfortunate side effect of this. The reality of who we are as individual beings is we are individual beings. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Which means that we are able to function and thrive and survive on our own. We don't need anybody else, but we don't believe that half the time. We won't think we're okay to the other person shows up and they complete us. That whole 50-50 thing again. Well, sometimes it's even worse. It's like 40-60. The reality is we are individual beings, whole and complete. We can survive, thrive, and be okay on our own if we choose to. And when you do that, you put yourself on a firm foundation, solid ground again, as I mentioned, and become more effective in any relationship. It also means that you won't attract anything less than another person who also stands on solid ground. Because if somebody comes up to you as codependent, they won't fit with you because there's no um, hooks they can hook into that you may be feeling less than, or loops they can hook into. It's like tap, like Velcro, yeah, hoops and looks, uh, looks hooks and loops. Anyway, that analogy went off the rails a little bit. So let me just bring it back to this, this point: the codependent trap is a place of victimhood because. When you are in a in a codependent relationship that is enmeshed, which is what they are, what that person does, let me go let me go back a second and show you this one more visibly. As I mentioned earlier on about what a person, if you stand on one foot and the other person stands on one foot, and you lean on each other, that's codependence, because neither one of you can stand on your own without the other person falling down. That means if they move, you fall down, which means you're a victim of them moving. Now you say I wouldn't blame them, wouldn't blame them bullshit. Codependent relationships are filled with dysfunctional and what's the other word looking for? Well, victim and victimizer paradigms. Not necessarily consciously, but it's happening in our way of being. So the tendency is that when you're in that sort of relationship, you make the other person responsible for your way of feeling good or bad or whatever it is. So if you want to feel good, and they don't do what you want, you'll feel bad. Or you'll judge them for not making you feel good. This is the victim place, because what happens is your mood, your feeling, is now controlled by what they do or don't do. This is why codependence sucks. And I'm very clear that part of my mission on the planet, that part of my work on the planet, is to stamp out codependence once and for all. I'm going to be busy, I know. and I can enroll, I'd like to enroll some more help. So if you're on the same page as me, great, I can use the help. But this comes back to the point about standing on, your, on solid ground. Solid ground is a place where you can live and function and thrive as an individual whole being. Then when you choose a relationship, choose, not, not um, what's, the looking for? what's the word I'm looking for? Not chase like a fix, but you choose a relationship. You come from a place of wholeness. And from a place of wholeness, you meet whole, like wholeness meets wholeness. So instead of being two people on one foot each leaning on each other, be two people standing on their own two feet side by side in a partnership that thrives and grows and expands. That to me is a healthy relationship. Now if it is for you too, awesome. Then we're on the same page. If it's not that way, why not? <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm not going to go there with it. So anyway, so a couple of things I want to say. I mentioned I'm going to put the book in the comments because that's, there's a chapter in that plus another 49 chapters that'll help you with your relationship paradigm and choices. Secondly though, I want to speak a little bit to the idea of having a whole effective life. And I'm just going to grab a prop for that. Let me just, uh, where is it? There it is. Um, I have a workbook that I've offered and I've talked about it before called Your Best Life. And in The Best Life, I have this thing in here, which is called the 
life as life aspects whoops life aspects wheel diagram it's 12 different areas of life that basically include things like um, your purpose in life um, financial financial areas of money business and work relationships spiritual practice health and wellness vacation and travel home and house stuff like that that to me is part of the wheel of life is why it's called the life aspects wheel diagram it's actually, it's actually one of the parts it's actually is the introduction to my your best life book which i'll take which i'll give the link for in the comments as well but that idea is that you put energy and focus into all 12 areas you again refine and hi sue nice to see you in the broadcast oh by the way i just realized i didn't tell you beforehand if you're watching this on youtube and you're wondering who i'm talking to this was a facebook live first and i'm interacting with people on facebook so if you want to do that in the future find me on facebook and i'll tell you about that in a moment so again back to your best life this uh, workbook, um, this workbook guide, it's seven keys to unlocking your life to be the best it could possibly be. And I was, that life aspects what I mentioned there's 12 different aspects of your life that you can put focus on any one of them or all of them as you choose to. Because in those 12 aspects, you'll find that some of them are doing really wonderful. Maybe you're actually feeling top, tip top health and everything's going great, but your home life sucks. Or maybe you've got a great career, but your bank account's not working too well, whatever it is. So basically what it, the idea of this life, your best life is meant to do is focus on the areas where you want to improve. Focus on the areas where maybe you're not at a level 10 each in those areas and make them level 10 as well. This is what creates the firm foundation which puts you back on that level, um, sorry, on that solid ground again. So I'll put a link in the comments. And by the way, just in case you're interested, and, let, and I should let you know this too, um, my website needs a major overhaul. So the website doesn't look pretty. So if you look at the web page, read the information without getting too invested in how ugly it looks. <laughs> the, the, work, the workbook, by the way, the, Your Best Life, is a very attractive, well-designed book because that part I can do well. So in case you look at the web page and go, that doesn't look too good, that's the web page. Don't look at that. Look, it's like, see through the illusion of that to the product that's in there. <laughs> I'm realizing some people have been turned off by my web page because it doesn't look as attractive as the book itself does. I'm not a great web designer. That's one of my one of my um, areas of improvement or one of my areas of delegation, I'll put it that way. So anyway, so to summarize this and bring it to a completion, standing on your own two feet and standing on solid ground is the most powerful way you can be available to any relationship, as well as available to your own life to have success, to thrive, to do what you want to do. I recommend, I encourage you to look in your areas of life where maybe that isn't absolutely working for you all the way through. Maybe there's one area of your life where you feel like you're not standing on two feet. Maybe you don't feel like you have the right place in your diet or, or in your spiritual practice. And work on how you can improve those areas. And again, my Rocket, my um, Your Best Life uh, program will absolutely help you get those work, things working well. By doing that, especially if you're single, well, let me do this way. If you're in a relationship, it will make your relationship much better because you're standing much stronger on your own, which means you'll be a better partner to your partner, you're a better partner to your beloved. I was saying it that way. If you're single, it'll make you much better, much, much better. More, you'll make you a more attractive prospect for somebody who's looking for a healthy relationship. And if you want a healthy relationship, this is one of the ways to get there. I think you have my point. Standing on solid ground, being grounded in who you are, and standing on both feet so you feel aligned to who you are, starts from inside. And those areas you're working on out there may or not all be perfect. But if you're standing true to your heart, true to your values, true to yourself, that is the first place from which you can grow. And again, in my work, if you want to, if you want to find out how to work with me, I'll put the link in the comments for that too. There are ways you can get this alignment working for you more easily. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking for a thread that goes to the end, and I'm so tying together. So I mentioned at the beginning about that thing about standing on foot, trying to be in a relationship. If you're not feeling, if you feel like you're you're hopping around and you're not feeling balanced in your life, that's a good clue that maybe you're not standing on both feet. In my work, I can help you learn how to stand on both feet solidly to be effective. So I think I've dragged that analogy into the ground too much. So on that that note, I'm going to wrap it up. So thank you for watching. Appreciate you being with me. This is again my daily broadcast at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Again, except for yesterday, I was late because of the Super Bowl. I'm not going to go there. Um, <laughs> so back in tomorrow at the same time at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, or if you're watching this on YouTube, wonder where you can find me live. Join me on Facebook at my personal page at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day, which is facebook.com/barryselby. 
you can catch me live again at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Follow me there. There should be a notification button somewhere around the video, which will let you know that to be notified next time I go live. Secondly, um, I save my broadcast to my business page on Facebook. If you want to watch my archives on Facebook, you can go to facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. Please like that page. It's always nice to have more likes. And you can scan through my broadcast there. If you're watching me on YouTube, you can find my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, channel there as well. And there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, which are all of these. And thirdly, fourthly, additionally, <laughs> I have a podcast on iTunes called Messages from the Masculine, same title, and you can download the audio versions of these, and you can subscribe to my podcast as well. Um, by the way, all my social media is Barry Selby, pretty much everywhere. And I think that's it. I appreciate you being with me as, as always. Thank you for watching today. I hope this made some sense to you and it actually inspires you to think about life differently, how you can have more powerful relationships, and what's possible to have your life rock and roll even more powerfully. Because that's why I'm here doing this. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I invite you to take care of yourself and consider for yourself this question about are you standing on your own two feet? Are you standing on solid ground? Are you ready to rock and roll in a relationship? With that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.